We're excited to have you at Woodworking with Wes today. We have a very special project. We're doing a whole bedroom set. There's some of the pieces we've already started, but we're going to show you what the material we use. We're going to show you some cutout and banding, and then we're going to put some together and show you how everything works and how this becomes a very important part of your finish. Like all projects, we begin at the table saw. Today's project, we're going to be using a colored melamine. Now you're familiar with melamine. White melamine is what we use for the interior of our kitchen cabinets mostly. But this is a charcoal gray melamine. And typically when we do our banding, we use half mill. This is a vinyl edge banding. And we use vinyl edge banding to band the rough edge of our melamine. But on this project, we're going to be using three mil. So six times as thick, and you can see how stiff it is. It requires, however, a banding machine. This you can glue on, or if it even comes with, with a, uh, an adhesive back. If you're, if you're not using vinyl, you can um, uh, iron it on. But this requires a banding machine. Let's take a look at our banding machine. Okay. This is the banding machine we're going to be using. If you don't own a banding machine or don't have access to a banding machine in your shop, I rent my banding machine by the hour from a shop that is close to me and I just pay shop time and they band my product. I just go over with my banding and my material all cut to size and they custom band it for me. And we're going to have that done now. We're going to cut our material and band it and then we'll get started. going to start our bedroom set build with a bookcase. Typically a bedroom set doesn't have a bookcase, but our client has asked for three of them this size. We're going to do this start to finish and show you how. Okay, we just got back with our uh, melamine all edge banded. I wanted to show you, this is our raw edge that we cover. Here's our wood, our melamine right there, charcoal gray, and here's our three mil edge banding. Now. The bander doesn't clean up really good and tight against the melamine, and I didn't want it to because I didn't want to damage the melamine. So we take a real sharp chisel and just trim off that excess. Then we'll go back and clean with a little bit of lacquer thinner. And we do that on both sides and clean that edge banding up so that it's exactly the size of our melamine. We've cleaned and trimmed our pieces for our bookcase. We've added a rabbit joint to the back side, a quarter inch back we're going to be putting in here, and we've drilled holes for adjustable shelves. Uh, we'll add a link to our video that uh, goes back to a video we did on adjustable shelf holes. Be sure to review that if you need to. And this is our sides, our floors, these are our top support pieces, and we'll assemble.
Okay, the box is nailed together. Now the back. Okay, what I've just completed here is a little foot piece for our bookcase. I made a little frame that is 13 16 of an inch thick and the size of the bottom and attached a 1 and 3 8 uh, trim piece to it. And let's watch how that fits right around the bottom of the bookcase here. And it gives it a little foot and hides our nails. So now we don't have any nails exposed on our melamine. And we're going to tack that on from the bottom side and clean that. And there is our foot mold. Okay, we're, we've turned our bookcase upside down. This is the top and we're going to attach the top to the cabinet now. What we'll do is we'll space it and get it all measured out and we're just going to attach it with some inch and a quarter screws and then we're going to run a little piece of trim around it and that will basically be our bookcase. So let's go ahead and get that done. We're going to install, and, and actually we've already installed one little piece of trim to go around the top side. Now this, like I say, this is the top, cabinet's upside down. This hides our nail holes that we nailed together with, and we're just going to put this little 3 8 by 15 16 trim around it and miter it in and nail it on. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. Come over here on this side. I'm going to show you a little trick about how to get this exact measurement. I'm going to take my pencil and put a little graphite on that edge. I'm going to set this right here on the edge of this cabinet. Right here, I'm going to hold my trim. Make sure I got it right where I want to, and I'm holding it right where I want to. And I'm going to take my piece of trim, and I'm just going to kind of rub it like that. And that's going to leave a little line. That's my cut line. Not very much. As Shakespeare would say, "'Tis not so deep as a well, nor wide as a church door, but will suffice." And we'll cut to that line. This completes the first segment of our bedroom set, the three bookcases that we had to build. Our next segment will be the dresser and nightstands. I want my video to come in close here. I want to show you these are my working drawings. If you've done, if you've seen any of my videos, you know my crude working drawings. This is the bookcase we built. This shows you how I do. I list my materials out. This is the nightstand we're going to build today. And this is the dresser that we're going to build today. And you can just see how I list everything. But, but what let's do, there are some similarities in the way we're going to build our, our dresser and the way we build our bookcases. So let's just go through. Let's build it. Just watch me go through and do these things. There are some unique things, and we're going to point those out. But let's just watch and see how it comes together.
Okay, we've completed our chest of drawers to this point. This looks very similar to the bookcases that we build, and it is basically the same construction. The biggest difference now comes with the dividers that we will put between each drawer like this. Now, one of the things we don't want to do is nail from the outside because we don't want that to show. So we're going to use our Craig pocket jig machine and we're going to drill those for pocket screws and screw those in. And that's the next step. We're ready to put our dividers now in between our drawers. We have our cabinet laying on its side and I have drilled my pockets with my Craig pocket uh, drill machine and uh, jig and we're going to be using these little screws right here and we'll go through. Now you'll notice that I have put spacers between each drawer that holds my divider right where it's supposed to be and it keeps it from moving around while I'm putting the screw in. We'll put those in now. our dividers in now we're ready to put the base and the top and the trim pieces that go with it those are the same as our bookcases so um, we'll just go ahead and do that and if you need to remember how we did that we'll go back to our first video and, and look at the way we did our base and top on the bookcases <music> At the very beginning of this project, I talked about how we'll use a crayon on this for our finish. Now remember, this is melamine, so there's no paint, no stain, but we have little nail holes right here, and that's what we're going to solve with our crayon. We'll just little rub a little crayon in there. We'll take a soft cotton cloth and buff, and the nail holes disappear. Very good. We just filled some nail holes with a crayon, but I made a major mistake. Well, I won't call it major, but we made a little error, and it requires more than just a crayon fix. Right here, I cut a piece of the edge banding too short and so I've got quite a large gap with part of my particle board showing. What I did is I went to my wholesale supplier and I bought some seam fill. Now seam fill is a filler or a, or a patch that they use for plastic laminate and I bought a black and a gray. The gray is a little light and so I'm going to mix these two until I get the right color and then I'll fill this it hardens just like uh, a plastic laminate. It's a, it's a good hard uh, patch and we'll fill that area and then we'll clean it with a little bit of lacquer thinner and that'll just disappear. We'll mix it right here on a piece of the original material so that we can get a perfect match. So just watch and see how we do this. Whoa, there's our black. And there's our gray. You can see the gray is just a little light. And this dries quite fast, so you need to work quickly. And we're just going to kind of mix it together like that until we get the right color. Oh, we're getting close, but I think we need just a touch more black. 
Nope, wrong one. <laughs> like I say, this dries quite fast, so we need to hurry along. We'll put just a little bit more black with it. There, that's almost a perfect color. Look how that blends in with the product that we're mixing on top of, the, the actual charcoal melamine. Now we'll just take some of this mix and we'll spread it in our hole here. Whoop. It's messy, but it cleans up with lacquer thinner, like I said. So we'll put that on here like this. And we're going to let that dry really good and hard for about 15-20 minutes and then we'll clean it up. Okay, we're getting ready to install our drawer guides for our dresser now. We're using a full extension side undermount guide that uh, I use. We'll screw that in like that, but I want to make sure that these are perfectly even from side to side, and so I made a spacer stick. Let me show you how this works. We'll take these two out. Start at the top, so you can space from the bottom. Maybe this little spacer stick. I put it flush against the bottom, and put it flush against the bottom of the drawer guide. And that space is my drawer guide. We'll do that all the way down with a, with a spacer that spaces equally on both sides. And that'll make our drawers nice and even and our drawer guides will be parallel to one another. We've installed the locking devices on the bottom side of our drawer and now what we have to do is slide them in and they're in. So there's all of our drawers, all soft clothes. All we have to do now is mount the drawer faces and put the hardware on. We're getting ready to put the drawer on the drawer face. I just wanted to show you how I do it. Um, we're going to be spacing with these little blocks. These facing blocks go on the bottom and I hold that flush to the bottom of the drawer and flush to the bottom of the drawer face and I have two equal size blocks that I put on either side of the drawer and center my drawer box to my drawer face. Then I just use, this is 5 eighths material, I just use a 1 inch staple and we put four staples in the corner. What that allows me to do is if it needs to be adjusted I can just bump it around and adjust a little bit before I put the drawer handle on, which is what holds it perfectly in place permanently. So that's how we do our drawer faces for our initial installation. Let's see how we did. I like it. We've got our drawer faces on now. All we got to do is put the hardware on. I told you we were going to do the dresser and the nightstand together. We didn't show much of the nightstand because of the fact that everything we did on the dresser, we had to do on the nightstand. So it was just the same construction, same trim around the top, same base, same body construction on the cabinet, same drawer, soft clothes, hardware. We're going to go ahead and put the hardware on that. We did the bookcases, then we did the nightstand and the dresser. Now we're actually going to do the bed. These are the rails. We're going to build a platform bed. If you know what a platform bed is, it's solid up and just the mattress and box springs sit on a platform. Um, this will consist of a platform bed and a headboard and the headboard's going to be really cool. Watch for the headboard because we have a real neat LED light fixture in it. But I want to show you how this bed frame is going to go together. I made a little jig, a little sample 
This would represent our rails. This would represent the head and footboard. And they're going to go together like this. And then we're going to have the platform in here. I just did this so you could see how we're going to lock the joints. These are two pieces of our rail stock. You'll notice that one is a lot longer than the other. That's where our headboard is going to hook together on it or, or be attached to it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of speed through this, put it all together, and then we'll show you what it's like. And I'll, I'll stop and explain things as I need to, but mostly we're just going to just nail this together and, and watch how it goes. Okay, here's the inside of our bed rail. You saw the outside when we turned it around. This strip here is to hold the platform and the rails that go in between that'll support the platform. Here's where we'll tie the footbed together, the footboard together. Here's where the headboard goes together right here. But we'll go ahead and make the other one. Looks just like this. Then we'll make the foot pieces. Okay, that's the inside of our rail, our foot rail. There's the outside. Again, this is where our platform will sit. Now, you notice that when I, as I assembled, that I tacked it together with a nail first and then screwed it. The nail was to hold it in place so that as I screwed, the, put the screws in it, that it wouldn't move around on me. The pieces that I used for spacers was to get this spaced correctly. I've already predetermined where I wanted it. Um, so these spaces allow for the thickness of the platform and to have the bed sit there and be recessed and it's all going to go together really, really nice. We'll show you what it is when it goes done. Now, for brackets for the corners to tie it together, I went to my local big box store, just bought some angle iron that had holes, and these are going to be our corner brackets for tying the bed together when we get to the installation of the bedroom in the bedroom. We'll show you how all that goes together as we assemble, but that's what we're going to use for our to tie it together on the job site. And I just bought a long piece, cut it to fit, and we'll screw it on. One other thing that we're going to do, and I'll just show you this. Melamine, and I wanted to talk about this before. Melamine, as you cut it, has a very sharp edge. And in fact, I've cut myself many times on melamine, and so you have to be very careful. You always want to take a piece of sandpaper and break the edge. Now, this foot rail and, and head uh, rail stock is going to go down against the floor uh, carpet or linoleum or, I mean, or carpet or hardwood floors depending on what they have in their deal. So we're going to put a, an eighth inch round over along the bottom edge here and we're going to sand this because this raw edge just goes down against the floor but we don't want to have anything that will cut or scratch or anything like that so we're just going to put an eighth inch round over along the bottom edge and sand it and then that goes down against the floor like that and hooks up to the bed rails. We're going to go ahead and finish all of that and then we'll be ready for the headboard. We've completed the bed rails and now we're working on the headboard section of our bed. I'll have my video come around and I'll show you. We've just kind of dry assembled our headboard here. This is going to be our side rail of our headboard. There'll be an inner rail. This is the actual uh, mattress and pillow. This will be uh, a light feature, an LED light feature, will have a luminous panel back here, and this is going to be the top. This level will be brought up so that it fits right underneath here, and the light box will sit behind and be uh, invisible from the view. 
but I just kind of dry assembled it so you could kind of get a picture of what our headboard is going to look like. We're just going to go through and assemble this, have you watch as we assemble, and we're going to put our light feature in, and we're going to have a cool looking headboard. Okay, what we did here was these structural pieces were to line up everything on the face side of the headboard and connect the little top that we put on it. Um, as you can see as we did, we now have the basic headboard construction. But we nailed and screwed through this layer and we're going to put one more layer on the outside like this. That will complete our headboard just like that. We're going to be, this piece goes down over the rail that we built earlier. This goes like this and this is where our light feature goes and we'll be putting that in next and putting these pieces on. But the headboard's coming together just right. We have our headboard completed now, the basic construction. We put the end pieces on. They're all attached. We're now going to turn it face down and, and install our light feature. And I'll show you our light feature and show you how we uh, put that in. And then we're going to turn it on and test it, see how it did. Okay, we're getting ready to put our light feature in. We're, we got a piece of 8 inch um, frosted plexiglass. We're going to lay that in just like that. Here's our little light box that we built. And we've attached some LED lights around the inside. We're going to turn that upside down like this and mount that against our plexiglass. We're just going to drill through this quarter inch and through the plexiglass and that will attach that. We're going to go ahead and do that right now and then we'll check it out. We got our light feature in, everything's ready to go. Let's test it out. <gasps> it works! That's great, we're excited. Welcome to our delivery site for Woodworking with Wes. We have our bed all loaded and we're getting ready to unload and put it together. Watch and see how it comes together.
now you've seen our bedroom set series all the way through. It's been a fun build, great job, and we really enjoyed it. And we look forward to seeing you next time with projects just like this on Woodworking with Wes.